You're tuned into the Believe in Bengals show with Solomon Wilcox and Adam Pacman Jones. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Believe in Bengals podcast delivered by 828 Logistics. He is Adam Pacman Jones. I'm Solomon Wilcox. And Adam, we got to begin today as we uh, just kind of stop down and have a conversation about the state of the Bengals. Uh, by all accounts, right over there at uh, yeah, at the stadium, the coaches seem to be um, confident. Nobody's overreacting. Nobody's pressing the panic button, even though we're 0-2. So just kind of give me your thoughts on what you believe to be the state of the team right now. Um, I don't think there's no need to panic. Um, you go back and look at the game as a team collectively. You sit your guys in there and you say, hey, I know what the records say, but I know what we should be. We beat ourselves two weeks in a row. So let's figure out how we can take away something from those two games and move on. But don't dwell on it. Um, it's, a, it's early in the season. And I think I don't think Joe is going to throw uh, three interceptions uh, no more this season. Um, I don't think we we'll have a snapping issue no more this season. So you look back at those things. But then you take out some of the good things out of um, what you have done in those losses, which is how they played the second half of both of those games, defense and offensive, while I, I would say, um, and figure out how do we start like that? How do we start off faster um, at the beginning of the game? Yeah, I believe that uh, when you stand in front of your team, you got to be able to show them some evidence more than just words, right? Be able to show some evidence of how you're performing. I think the fact that, hey, despite the fact that the Bengals have had multiple mistakes, whether it's missing an extra point, whether it's a poor snap on special teams, they've been in it uh, with a chance to win each and every game so far this year. Joe Burrow, as we know, last season when he had a wonderful year, he finished number one in the NFL uh, by PFF grades at performing quarterbacks against pressure. This year, he ranked seventh. I know it looks a whole lot worse, but right now he's seventh, so still top ten and when it comes to his performance against blitzing defenses. We spent a lot of money on the offensive line. That's been talked about. And while we've given up more sacks, um, 13 sacks uh, through the first two games, uh, last year through the first two games, Joe Burrow was only sacked six times. But we're giving up the same amount of percentage of pressure because we're throwing it more. 70% of the snaps have been out of shotgun through the first two games. At this point last year, only 59% of the plays had gone out of shotgun. So we're throwing it more, so there's more sacks. But the percentage of pressure on pass plays is really about the same. So what I'm trying to say is the team is not performing a whole lot worse. It's really about right at the same. However, I think that's that's a positive to be able to point to for the players. Last year at this point, we were 1-1 one one after two games. Right now we're 0-2 but it's got to get corrected this week. I totally agree. I totally agree with you, but there's no, no, no panic button. I think um, it is a sense of urgency to uh, make sure that we're doing the little things right. Um, and we got to get turnovers. We got to figure out a way to get turnovers and get to the quarterback. I think we only got what one stack um, right now, um, no turnovers. So we got you know, one, we got two. one turnover. We got, we got one, one turnover. Turn. DJ Reader, remember the forced fumble against Dallas last yes, week. You're right. You're right. I think we got one turnover and one sack. Um, so we, we just got to figure out a way to get to the quarterback. But the panic button, I don't think I don't think you panic because we know we know what we're capable of doing. Um, and and all we have to do is stop shooting ourselves in the foot. We're, we're gonna be okay. Do not panic, Bengal fans. One thing don't I tell panic. you. Another thing I tell you, you can't do. You can't overlook the New York Jets. Remember last year, week eight, Cincinnati Bengals go out to play the New York Jets. We had them down by 11 points heading into fourth quarter. And all I know is they came from behind. They scored 11 unanswered points. Um, the Jets were going to win 34 to 31. In that game, it was the backup quarterback, Mike White, had over 400 yards passing, three touchdowns. He completed 82% of his passes in that game uh, to beat the Cincinnati Bengals. So I, I got to believe that uh, in this game, there's no way the Bengals are going to overlook 
the New York Jets, no way they overlook Joe Flacco. No, no way they can overlook Joe Flacco. He he's playing pretty good right now. I watched him last week. Um, Sauce Walker looked it pretty good. Like, these guys are young. I mean, young as far as group of team, but Joe is a veteran. Um, he's throwing the ball really good to to be at, at his age. So it's gonna be interesting. Um, they have a really good front over there. Um, but we we can't overlook this game. We this is a must win right here. It's not. Uh, it's not like a panic win, but we got to get back on the right track. Yeah, look, uh, the Jets are better than what a lot of people think. They've drafted really well. They got a lot of players uh, who have gone in the first round. Uh, Garrett Wilson, the talented receiver, the rookie out of Ohio State last week. Uh, remember, they came back to beat the Cleveland Browns. Uh, Adam, the Browns had them down by 13 points. And they came from behind to win that game, 31 to 30. Yeah. And remember, it was the Browns who missed an extra point. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and it was enough for, um, for the Jets to come back and win it. In that game, Garrett Wilson, eight catches, 102 yards. The rookie had two touchdowns. So, you know, I think the Bengals secondary has got to have their eye on Corey Davis. They got to have their eyes on, on Garrett Wilson. And we already know who Joe Flacco is. Last week, Against the Browns, over 300 yards passing. He had four touchdowns, no interceptions. We got to make Joe Phyllis age, man. And we've got to be able to get pressure on the quarterback, as you said. We've got to be able to create some turnovers. And we can't let the rookie wide receiver, who seems to be coming in his own, Garrett Wilson, we can't let him get hot against our secondary. If you let Joe get back there and just pat with no pressure, um, Joe, Joe can throw the ball. I know when we played Joe, it was all, we would, our whole game plan would be to play him in cover two, to make him check the ball down and just don't give up the deep ball because he loves he loves taking the shots. So it's going to be interesting, but I know we need to make him feel uncomfortable and get to him early on in the game. We got to start fast this week. Um, we haven't been starting fast. Last week they came right down the field and stole us. Like, we got to start fast. Um, listen, the Jets have two running backs. Remember uh, Michael Carter last year? I think he had 29 touches, 175 yards, uh, 5.9 yards per touch against us. He was the guy catching the ball out of the backfield on third down, making our linebackers miss. Man, we had a tough time. Remember, the Jets scored on five straight possessions. That's how they were able to come from behind and beat us. And they also have um, Brees Hall, the rookie running back from Iowa State, who's a much more talented back, a bigger back. So we're going to have to tackle well. We're have, going to have to defend well in space. To me, uh, look, we're expecting the offense to play better. Yeah, they got to protect Joe Burrow. We can talk about those things. But I think this week on the road, I, I think our defense is going to be under the spotlight now. I like our defense to be able to play at a high level. But remember, this is an offense that put up some big numbers on us one year ago. They'll be looking to do the same. I think the Jets' offense is better than they were last year. So our defense is going to have to be really good in this game. Yeah, we are. But the only thing I'm saying, as long as we get to Joe early, um, it can change the tempo of the game. We can't let Joe get back there and just pat it. You know what I mean? Because if he's just sitting back there looking pretty, it could be a long day for us. Not only that, um, I think – last week against the Browns and last year against us. Even if we do get an early start, man, we got to play good in the second half. The Jets are proven under Robert Sala to be a good second half team, capable of coming from behind and winning games as they did against us in week eight last year, and exactly what they did to Cleveland uh, one week ago. So you tell me uh, who's going to win and why. Um. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Bengals win, and all the and the reason why I'm saying this, this this line got to be able to get together to make this band play. So hopefully, I, I'm thinking the line is gonna play a whole lot better. They're gonna be all accord on one one sound, one band, and that's the reason why the Bengals gonna win. And uh, I think we win by three. Well, um, I'm in agreement with you, um, but for different reasons. I do believe the Bengals are going to win. You know, they played um, 120 minutes plus another 10 
with the overtime uh, against Pittsburgh. So 130 minutes, and we've yet to lead at one single minute during the two games so far this season. Uh, I believe the Bengals are going to win, and the reason why I think they're going to win, they're going to get off to the early lead, and we're going to hold the lead for four quarters in this game, and we will be able to close it out. No more of this comeback stuff for the New York Jets. They've had their miracle come from the come from behind win already this season, and the Bengals are going to take the lead, keep the lead, and emerge from New York with a win, our first win of the season, by the way. Oh, God, do we need it. Yes, we do. <laughs> of course we need it, man. We got to get hot and we got to go on the run. The back end of the Bengals' schedule looks murderous. So we got to start taking some of these easy wins. And really, there is no easy wins in the NFL. There's no doubt about it. As you can see, um, a lot of teams giving up some surprising uh, games so far this year. Teams expect to be really good, um, losing in the final seconds to others. So we're going to take every single week, take it seriously. And uh, this, this week, the Bengals will come home with their first win of the season. Adam, thank you for taking the time to join us. This has been a wonderful episode of the Believe in Bingo podcast delivered by the wonderful people at 828. We'll be back next week. And of course, next week, we'll be back on Valley Sports Ohio, Channel 43 in Cincinnati for the Believe in Bingo podcast delivered by 828 Logistics. Jesse Bates, two picks this week. Let's go.